Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our plenary session with Talks Omisha Kane, the Director of California Department of Transportation, or Caltrans. Um, I am Anushka Thakkar, um, co chair of the Programming Committee for this year's APVB conference. Um, I am also a program associate for the transportation team at Smart Growth America. Um, it is my pleasure to be introducing Director Omi Shakin for our session today. Director Omi Shakin's transportation vision for California features a safe, sustainable, and multimodal transportation system that builds on strong local partnerships. Having been immersed in the transportation industry for almost two decades, Director Omi Shakin came to Caltrans following eight years with the Tennessee Department of Transportation. There, he successfully established environmental, multimodal, and planning policies to make TDOT one of the best DOTs in the country. Director Omi Shakin is completing a PhD in engineering management from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, has a master's degree in urban and regional planning from Jackson State University, and a bachelor's of arts in engineering technology from Mississippi Valley State University. Please join me in welcoming Director Omi Shakin to the APVP virtual stage. The stage is all yours, sir. Thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Good. Very good. Thank you for uh, Aneska. Thank you for the uh, for the introduction. Uh, very excited to be a part of the uh, AP, APBP meeting uh, this conference this year. I've had a chance to engage uh, in, in the meetings and conferences from this uh, organization for for many years, um, and it's very exciting for me to to come back and be a part of it. Though in this virtual format, it's not always the same, but I think we're all used to the, the changes that we have to make to, to do it in this way. Uh, thanks to Melanie uh, and the APBP staff and uh, my old friend, uh, Andy Clark, who I know is a part of reaching out to me to be a part of uh, this year's uh, uh, this year's conference. So I want to cover a few things that are happening uh, specifically at Caltrans, the California Department of Transportation, what we're doing to uh, not only embrace issues related to APBP's work more, but just our overall impact on transportation um, in general. Uh, to me, this is one of the most exciting periods to work in this industry, to work uh, in this space that we we're all working in, whether you're an active transportation person or just transportation in general. Uh, the convergence that we're seeing of funding and policy possibly um, is unlike we've ever seen before. Um, and it's really exciting uh, to be a part of a, a time frame uh, like this where we know uh, we can have so much impact. And at Caltrans specifically, uh, we're making a huge shift. We're making a significant shift uh, to become, if I could put it in uh, simple terms, to be more, more people centric, to be more people focused than we've ever been before. Um, it, it's uh, we when you work at a state DOT, when you work at a city DOT, I think mostly people know you for the fact that you build a lot of infrastructure and you build things. But for us, building infrastructure um, is a means to an end. Uh, the true end that we are seeking is to create a, a, a greater quality of life, a brighter future for the people we serve. That's the true end. It's not the infrastructure in itself. Uh, and so we're making that shift. It's a challenging one, but nevertheless, uh, an exciting one for us at Caltrans. So next slide. So to make that shift at Caltrans, uh, we have three foundational principles that we're embracing. All the work that we're doing at Caltrans is being done through this lens, the lens of these three items. And this is groundbreaking for an organization like, like ours. Many of the, the these principles that you see on the screen, a lot of the apartments talk about them, um, but we wanna make these not only talking points, we wanna make these living points. Uh, we wanna make these things that we live by, that our work is done through um, and very much we know there's an impact on active transportation. Now I'll go through the, each one of these in a little bit more detail, but equity, again, this is something that a lot of DOTs across the country now are more familiar with their impact than ever before. We are as well as Caltrans. There's, there's a lot more for us to learn here, uh, but we're growing uh, and making significant strides, I believe, uh, in the equity space. Climate action, 
how uh, the choices uh, we make from a modality and mobility standpoint uh, uh, impact the environment, uh, the su sustainability of communities um, uh, it is, is big for us and it's something that we're putting a lot of focus on and it's part of our uh, foundational principles. And of course, safety, not just, uh, again, safety of, of vehicles and uh, people driving cars, but safety for uh, people who are walking uh, and biking in, in our state. Next slide. Five priorities uh, that we identified actually before those three foundational principles you saw were safety, modality, innovation, efficiency, and partnerships. Uh, when I came on board, had the, spent the time with our team to come up with what we were going to focus on. And we were fortunate that we did this before the pandemic hit. And so when the pandemic hit, we kind of had a, a true sense of what our North Star was, what we were, we were going to be uh, focused on. Uh, and these priorities uh, led to the creation of eventually those foundational principles and some other key uh, uh, guiding uh, policy documents for the department. And I'll talk about some of these five priorities, but these five priorities were really significant in helping us frame where we are today as a department. Uh, next slide. So uh, those guiding documents that I mentioned, um, uh, two of them, uh, are the strategic plan, which is a uh, four-year uh, or five-year plan uh, into how we're going to focus on our goals, our values uh, as a department, our, our mission, uh, and our vision for, for the department. And uh, embedded in the strategic plan is the things that I mentioned before, uh, safety, uh, equity, um, uh, climate action, uh, uh, being becoming more multimodal. Those are all things that are embedded in the strategic plan. And, you know, you see departments come up with strategic plans often and uh, they end up being uh, very good dust collectors. We're not doing that at the department. There's a meeting going on right now that we call our executive board meeting. The top 30, uh, 40 leaders of the department are in the meeting right now that I stepped out of and they're going over at this very moment uh, the strategic plan and the 59 action items there and sort of our status update uh, on that. So this is something that we are strategic plan. We're fully committed to and it's guiding our work every day. Uh, the the CTP 2050, um, uh, the document that you see on the right was also released in February um, of this year. And it's our long range plan. This is the uh, non fiscally constrained uh, plan uh, that guides uh, sort of the uh, investment approach uh, to uh, transportation for the state of California. Um, again, very much focused on issues around equity, uh, multimodalism, um, equity, uh, all fully embedded um, in, this, uh, in, in this document and uh, helping us make better decisions, I believe, for the department um, as we move forward. Uh, so key foundational documents here. Next slide. So mentioned equity uh, several times already and mentioned the fact that this has to be something that we live by and not just talk about. I know a lot of people are talking about equity and, and uh, whether it be in NGOs or governmental institutions, um, but we, we, we've decided to set up a framework, not only come up with, a, with an equity statement, but actually come up with a framework to guide um, how this work is gonna happen uh, throughout Caltrans. And, even beyond this framework that you see here of the four P's, um, also metrics, also data to track how we're making steps here uh, and to hold ourselves accountable. And the public can, can hold us accountable to the things that we're committing ourselves to. I'll explain these four P's uh, very briefly. Uh, people you know, is about uh, our team at, at Caltrans, the department at Caltrans, uh, to ensure that we're truly giving people an opportunity um, at every rung of level in the department, at the entry level, all the way up to executive management. And when I say opportunity, not just hiring uh, on into the department, even though that's an initial big step, but promotions, uh, training opportunities, truly given a sense, uh, whether somebody has a any form of a disability, regardless of the demographic uh, that they represent, 
truly giving them an opportunity within the department. And I think it starts there. It starts on the home front, starts on the home base of Caltrans that we truly hire um, and promote and train uh, uh, and give opportunities uh, within our organization uh, first. Projects and programs is about listening and engaging communities like we've never had before uh, to a different level with genuine intent to really hear back from them. Um, and uh, trying to right the wrongs uh, of the many years of the past. Uh, our industry has come around significantly in the last year. We're finally talking about the fact that highways have been, uh, have provided some good uh, in, uh, in the growth of our country and, and our communities, but it, it's also had a lot of harm, a lot of negative harm that has come from the way we've built uh, uh, highways throughout this this country. I think we're finally uh, facing up to those facts um, at the federal level, state level, and city level. And we're definitely doing it at Caltrans. Um, a program was, well, uh, the, the the idea, I should say, not a, not a formal program yet, but an idea was has been raised within our department that we're pursuing of reconnecting communities, what a lot of people are talking about uh, nowadays. We identified 70 locations, seven zero locations to possibly pursue in California to reconnect communities uh, and to possibly work with local governments um, on, on an effort like that. This is the first time I've mentioned this publicly. Uh, it's still something that's under development, but we actually applied for RAISE, uh, the federal RAISE former Tiger program, I applied for RAISE funding to help us uh, pursue uh, uh, projects in this arena. Uh, Partnerships uh, is about, uh, we have a $1.1 billion uh, DBE and small business program, but connecting with communities uh, and businesses more there. Um, and Planet, the Planet uh, P is about uh, ensuring that the disparate impacts that we've seen in underserved communities, that we address those disparate impacts as we move forward uh, with transportation projects. Next slide. So safety, uh, you know, we could spend a ton of time on this, but I think we were very familiar with the fact that last year uh, we unfortunately saw through the pandemic numbers going in the wrong direction, numbers, uh, the direction we don't want them to go in. Um, and in many cases, again, the um, the the results here are, uh, you, you can see them very much that they're, uh, they're despaired as far as where the impacts are happening. Uh, in California specifically, you're 63% more likely to die if you're African, you're an African American pedestrian um, in our state. Um, and if you uh, if you make fifty thousand dollars or less, uh, you you are twice as likely to to die uh, uh, being a cyclist in our, our in our state. So again, whether it be income or whether it be race, the impacts here are truly frightening. Uh, I was made aware today in a discussion that we've probably had five pedestrians, uh, not pedestrian, cyclists uh, die uh, in the San Diego um, area of the state in the last, uh, a little over the last month. Uh, not on the state highway network, on the local network, but nevertheless, five cyclists. Um, we've got a, a, a huge problem here. and We've got to be doing more here in California. The numbers are 10 people every single day die on the state's um, on the overall transportation network of the state. 10 people every day. Um, we've got to figure out how to reverse that alarm and statistic. Um, uh, next slide. And to, to get there, um, more policies, more investments uh, related to uh, improving our modality has to be a focus. And we are. Um, we're, we're doing that at Caltrans. Um, we, uh, from our complete streets policy to other policies that we uh, we have direct influence over, we're making those changes um, uh, within the department and trying to change the culture to become again more people uh, people focused than vehicle or infrastructure focused uh, within the department. Next slide. Uh, to do that. Um, again, a big part of what needs to happen are projects, active transportation projects. Uh, there was a $100 million, $100 million set aside from the state commission, the CTC, California Transportation Commission, 
uh, last year. Um, and even this year, uh, Governor Newsom, my, my boss, has proposed a, a $500 million set aside uh, in the state's general fund, $500 million uh, for um, active transportation um, in, in just this year. So uh, this is all aside from uh, the hundreds of millions of dollars that we already spent on active transportation in the state. Uh, but I think it's going to take these kinds of investments. It's going to take policies. It's going to take actions for us to get there. Uh, on this particular slide, I, I, I was, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that I serve on the Council on Active Transportation. I am the chair of the Council on Active Transportation um, at ASHTO. Uh, much kudos to ASHTO for continuing to support the work of the, the Council on Active Transportation. There are three things that are going to be a focus uh, for uh, the council and the next uh, next year. Uh, number one is is research. Uh, number two uh, is professional development, and number three is communications. Um, I don't have um, the time to go through uh, each one of those three areas um, and talk about um, uh, the details of what we're doing, uh, but I do want you to know that the the council on active transportation at at Asto is continuing to work. I'm excited to continue to chair it. Uh, research. Uh, uh, professional development and communications are at the core of what we're going to be focused on over the next over the next year. Next slide. So, as a part of uh, the goal of us wanting to see uh, more active transportation projects in the state is improving uh, the climate we have in the state. It's a unique state because our transportation system is used more than any other state. Uh, Texas, I believe, has the largest network of highways and, and streets in the entire country. Uh, but it, when it comes to VMT and utilization of that network, ours probably is, uh, you know, more than double anybody else in the entire country. We have that much VMT uh, in California. And because we have that level of VMT, you can see the impact on uh, the environment when it comes to climate. Uh, transportation represents 41% of the GHG in the entire state, uh, you know, uh, almost double any other uh, economic sector uh, for the nation. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, look at the EPA data for the nation, the transportation re sector represents 29%. So we're 12 points, 12 percentage points higher in California alone. So we've got a work cut out for us. Uh, to reduce the GHG impacts from the transportation sector in the state. Next slide. I'll go through the rest of these pretty quickly because uh, I know we, we stop at the top of the hour and I want to hear a few uh, a few questions. Electrifying um, the state's fleet is a priority. The governor has released uh, two executive orders uh, related to um, related to this. Um, and we're following uh, suit. And as you know, the OEMs, the industry are following suit as well. California is leading the nation and potentially leading the entire world uh, on uh, being the most aggressive when it comes to climate policies and uh, in particular, how the transportation industry impacts that. Next slide. Uh, innovation is something we're embracing within the department. It's one of those five priorities. Uh, California is, uh, the innovation capital of the world, I believe. We have Google, uh, Apple, Uber, Lyft, you know, name all the big tech uh, sectors. They're right here in our backyard, Tesla. And we as a department, I believe, um, we as a department have to embrace that culture of innovation more. Um, and we're doing that at Caltrans. I can list some examples, but I'm not gonna talk about them uh, extensively now. Uh, next slide. Efficiency is something else that we are holding dear as one of those five priorities. We're a nearly $16 billion entity. And uh, a lot of people think, oh, you've got that kind of money. You can just rest on your laurels and spend money as you wish. But by no means, uh, we have to continue to come up with ways to become more efficient um, for the people we serve in this state. Uh, next slide. Um, and I think this may be the, the, the last slide. Uh, and partnerships uh, it is as the fifth priority there. It's truly about making sure that Caltrans is just not doing what Caltrans wants to do whenever we want to do it. Uh, that we, uh, in doing our work, we keep the people we serve first. 
and that we were having conversations and uh, relationship building with stakeholders and partners uh, to have the, the best ultimate outcomes that we want to have. If we truly want to have those, we can't just go about doing our work uh, in a vacuum uh, without truly engaging. And that's where DOTs uh, uh, struggle the most um, in, in doing those uh, silo based, having a silo based approach. And we're reversing that at Caltrans, uh, truly approaching our work with the people we serve first. It, it's not easy, uh, but it's something that we've embraced uh, within the department. Next slide. Yep, and I, I think that's it. Um, sorry, I had to rush through that, but I, I wanted to make sure we had at least uh, 10 minutes for some conversation. Uh, I wanna thank uh, several people on my team at Caltrans, uh, Onellis, Tammy, uh, Susan, uh, many people who work hard to move me from place to place and presentation to presentation they, they put together. So I wanna thank those, uh, thank those ladies for all their important work. Um, so with that, um, I'd love to, to jump into some questions. Uh, if there are any questions, I was really looking forward more to this part than me rambling through a presentation. So so thank you for uh, thank you for the time. Yeah. Thank you, Director Omishakin, for your presentation today. Um, without taking another minute, I'm going to jump right into the questions that I've rolled in. Um, for our audience, if you haven't already typed your questions into the chat, this is your chance. Do so now. Um, the first question that I see on the chat um is asking this is inspirational stuff and transform transformative stuff that you are talking about here caltrans is a big agency with a long history so my simple question is how is it going what's the reaction you are seeing to this very different approach and what are you learning along the way that others following your lead may benefit from oh wow <laughs> that's a very good question um and i think uh, if i'm if i'm reading it that probably came from uh, my friend andy i haven't talked to andy in a while but um, what we're seeing is uh, people are really embracing this. Um, it is not without resistance, um, mm -hmm. and I think that's to be expected. There, there are some people within the department and external to the department who have a, a significant problem with this. I have a little bit of a benefit of having um, a, a, a governor who I think essentially <laughs> brought me in because he wanted to a different direction for this organization that's been around for a hundred plus years and rarely ever brings in people externally to run it. Uh, I think in the last 30 or 40 years, there's probably been one person external to this department who's led the department. I think I'm probably the second person. So uh, I've got that benefit of having the backing of, look, we wanna create a more equitable state government. We wanna focus on climate action and, and those things. but. I don't talk about these issues because he wants to talk about them or he thinks they're important. We know this is what people expect of us um, and they deserve to get from us um, is a more people focused department, not uh, a department that's focused on building the biggest, largest infrastructure possible. Those days are behind us. Um, it's not an easy shift, especially to talk about things that are a little bit, if you will, softer like equity. Uh, that are not as sort of infrastructure focused, uh, you know, safety and climate action related things. Those are more tangible equity and talking about helping the unders underserved and marginalized. It's not an easy conversation. And so there's resistance internally, there's resistance externally. Um, but I think as we continue to keep um, the people f first approach, uh, I think we'll continue to gain momentum and ground. Uh, I think the, the resistance is expected. So we're, we're going to keep pushing forward. Uh, very yeah. good question. Yeah, I think the next question is a great segue. Um, it asks, can you speak to the changes that have occurred at Caltrans as a large transportation agency? And what are the keys to catalyze cultural change for DOTs that may need a little push? Yeah, very, very another very good question. Um, so we're, we're to, the, to the question, we're the largest uh, DOT in, in, in the in the country outside of the federal government. We're closing in on 22,000 people. Um, and so when you've got an organization that size that you're working with them, you know, culture changes is, is not easy. Um, mm -hmm. I think we, we find, we found particular moments, like when we rolled out our strategic plan, when we rolled out our long range plan to say, look, we're committed to this. Um, this is the direction that we're going in. Um, 
and we had cons we've had consistent messaging, not just from me, but all you know, all the other well, most of the other leaders within the department. Consistent messaging related to this direction of these foundational principles that I mentioned. But one thing I'm realizing uh, more and more, uh, I would say two things realizing more and more is one, leaders and departments have to get their hands dirty, if you will. So it's one thing to give the message and use the bully pulpit and say, look, you know, climate is important or safety is important, but you got to spend the time. You got to go out to districts. We have 12 districts. You got to spend time with the team um, to, to, you know, sit at the table and understand what those processes are that need to be changed and not just sit in the, in your, in your bubble, um, and talk about these issues. So that's number one. Number two, uh, 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 assigning, uh, metrics, performance metrics to these issues, uh, I think is, is key. Uh, DOTs are machines. And if you just talk about these things and you don't say, look, here are the dollars and here are the expectations and here are the percentages. And if you don't do that, you're going to fall short. It's not going to get embedded and ingrained um, in the culture. So um, excellent question. Yeah. Um, the third question that I see here on the chat um, for workforce development that can help with active transportation infrastructure, how can states use qualified youth services? and conservation corps to help state DOT and Department of Natural Resources, workforce development, and complete active transportation projects such as California conservation corps. Yeah, we, we don't um, uh, we don't do a good enough job of tapping into those to those resources like that, I, I, I think. I mean, I think each state and city, um, you have to think about that. You have to think about um, how you can make you, you utilize uh, cores like that uh, even more. I recently met with the, the director uh, in, in California. Um, and I think you just have to build those relationships. Um, you, you have to knock on the door. Uh, he reached out to me and actually we're on a flight together and he followed up with me from the flight. But I think we should just we should make sure we um, we tap into those uh, to those resources where possible, because I think they can those corps can be a, a, a part of the you know, everything from messaging better to actually uh, assisting us with some of the, the work in communities. So I think it's a good good point. Um, and we're gonna do a better job of that at Caltrans. It's, it's since the director hit, reached out to me, it's something I'm gonna focus on. I, I think we can probably get one or two more in. I'm rushing through these, sorry about that. No, yeah, um, I think we have, we can take a couple, one or more, one or two more questions. So the other one that I see is, have you been able to start embedding performance expectations and accountability into job descriptions and reviews so people know this kind of work affects their ability to grow in the agency? <laughs> yeah, no, that's I mean, that's what I was alluding to earlier. Um, uh, to get to that shift that you eventually want to get to, um, I think some states and, and city governments have focused on laws, and laws are important. You know, those, you know, policy changes and laws are important, but if you truly want to embed this in, in culture, you, you've got to attach it to why people are doing what they're doing. Um, because, you know, state government, especially and city government, uh, even federal government, sometimes people just say, look, you know, I'll wait, I'll wait this secretary or this director or whoever he is, I'll wait him out, her, him or her out. Um, and this is how you you embed it. So we're, we're starting to do absolutely do that, especially for the leadership level, the middle management level, we're embedding these things um, in that at Caltrans. So if your city and state are not, that's one of the things they need to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to take this last question because it's, it's a great one. Is there anything we can do as residents to support your approach at Caltrans? Um, <laughs> to get, give me some more money. <laughs> no, just um, I, I think continuing to to share in, in the appropriate uh, venues and the appropriate platforms how important this is uh, through NGOs, even as an individual, wherever you see the platforms, whether it be a social media effort um, or through an organization, uh, reaching out to your elected officials, um, you know, state and city. Um, even the you know the executive office at, at the state level, sharing that and not being quiet about it because what happens often is that you know you hear from the squeaky wheel, you hear from the people who are saying no nah, I don't think so the naysayers They're, that tends to be the loudest voice, and so whatever venue that's uh, deemed appropriate whether it be social media or uh, 
uh, through an NGO or through any other governmental institution, write a letter, uh, uh, you know, send a message, uh, radio, TV, whatever it may be, that this is the direction that we need to be going in if we're going to create that that state with a brighter future for all. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much. Um, I'm afraid I think we're about time. So thank you again, Director Omishakin, for being with us today. Um, we have our networking happy hour starting now, so I hope to see everybody there. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.